In the previous examples, we've covered motion in a circle that is uniform, so it will be traveling at a constant angular speed omega. However, in order for an object to actually reach a certain angular speed omega, it has to accelerate up to that speed from rest. So the way that it accelerates is known as an angular acceleration, which is the rate of change of angular speed over time, rather intuitively. So it is represented by the letter alpha, and it's simply the change in angular speed over time. Uh, the units are per second squared, which can also be written just as radians per second squared. Now, because we have acceleration, we can actually redefine uh, the linear motion equations, but in angular form. So the translations we have to make are the displacement undergone is the angle changed. Oh, why is it not set down there? So the change in angle, because we're dealing with radians, there's no meters anywhere. Uh, the initial velocity we consider as omega naught. Um, you would see that in some textbooks the initial velocity is written as v naught, but I write it as u for clarity, but for the angular case it's going to have to be u equals omega naught. And then of course v equals omega, and a equals alpha. Uh, time remains unchanged. So what does that actually do to our uh, SUVAT equations then? Well, this is what they turn into. So the first one stems from v equals u plus at and becomes omega equals omega naught plus alpha t. The second one comes from s equals a half u plus vt, which means that the change in angle delta theta is a half times omega naught plus omega times t. Next, this one comes from s equals ut plus a half at squared, and now reads delta theta equals omega naught t plus a half alpha t squared. This one comes from s equals vt minus a half at squared, which means that delta theta equals omega t minus a half alpha t squared. And the last one, rather unsurprisingly, comes from v squared is u squared plus 2as, which now reads omega squared equals omega naught squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. Now we're going to be using these formulae just like we did in the near motion questions for a few practice problems. But I will just give a, a slight heads up. Uh, this one is probably the most useful to use because you don't really see the change in angle given as a variable to find or a variable given. So you will have to really like using omega equals omega naught plus alpha t.